Good afternoon. Um, and thank you, Mia Petra, uh, for your um, kind words of, uh, of support. Let me start perhaps by uh, seeking to respond to the, the very question uh, that features as, as the title to this session. What is the difference uh, between e-commerce and, and digital trade? Uh, and uh, perhaps um, disappointingly say that there is no difference as far as we are concerned. Uh, the EU prefers to use the word um, digital trade because electronic commerce is traditionally associated more with selling goods on the internet. And um, in our view, digital trade therefore expresses much better the broader scope that we see in those uh, negotiations, for example, covering also data flows, consumer protection. And that is in fact why the European Union uses the terms digital trade in all of its uh, recent free trade agreements, like the one we recently concluded with the United Kingdom, the Trade and Cooperation Agreement. Now, um, in the WTO, there is a definition of electronic commerce under the WTO work program on electronic commerce. And it's meant to refer to the production, distribution, marketing, sale or delivery of both goods and services by electronic means. Um, so uh, the key issue here, I think, which is important to understand is that whether you talk about electronic commerce or about digital trade, you talk about trade that is being enabled by electronic means, and this relates both to trade in goods and to trade in services. Now, um, even if the WTO adopted an, a, a work program on electronic commerce already back in 1998, multilateral negotiations on the topic never took off in reality. We, for once, as European Union, again attempted to negotiate multilaterally on uh, electronic commerce um, prior to the uh, ministerial conference that took place in 2017, uh, 2017 in Buenos Aires. But that attempt was again blocked uh, by countries like India and South Africa who already at the time insisted that no negotiations on new issues could take place before the Doha round could be uh, fully completed, particularly when it comes to, to agriculture. And that remains their position up to, up to now. Now, it is precisely to try and end this deadlock that after more than 20 years of discussions on electronic uh, commerce, uh, so much for a new issue, so to speak. A group of 70 WTO members adopted a joint statement in Buenos Aires in, in 2017 uh, to start exploratory talks on possible WTO negotiations on electronic uh, commerce. Now, we first started with one full year of exploratory talks uh, addressing all the issues and mapping the universe of those potential negotiations. And a year later, or about a year later, in January uh, 2019, a group of 76 countries signed up to start formal negotiations on e-commerce. And that's a group that from the outset, beyond the European Union, Australia, Japan, and Singapore, because those three countries are the uh, co-conveners, the, the co-chairs of these negotiations, this group from the outset uh, contained uh, the US, China, Russia, uh, or Brazil, for example. Now, uh, today, as Mia Petra said, there are uh, 86 uh, official participants, but this is an open and transparent negotiating framework, and any other WTO member can actually join. And we've seen many cases of uh, developing countries, for example, African countries, taking a very active part in the uh, ongoing negotiations on, on many issues without actually being formally part of, of that group. I'm, I'm thinking of a country like Senegal, uh, for example. Now, uh, my main point uh, for today is that these negotiations have very important systemic implications for the WTO. If they succeed, they will demonstrate that the organization continues to be relevant for international rulemaking in the 21st century. If they fail, of course, or if they drag on for so long, as Mia Petra was saying, 
20 years, they would simply demonstrate the opposite, that the WTO is not uh, relevant for rulemaking. Um, turning to the agenda for uh, those negotiations, there are, you know, about 40 um, issues that are on the table. They can be clustered one way or, or the others. But let me just briefly go through a number of main uh, themes. We first negotiate on the facilitation of electronic transactions, issues like electronic signature. We negotiate on the facilitation of digital trade as such. We have provisions, for example, on paperless trading. We're also negotiating on the issue of customs duties on electronic transmissions. Of course, uh, data flows, data localization measures, and, and privacy uh, are going to constitute an important part of this uh, negotiation, just like, for example, pro provisions on consumer protection, spam, uh, the protection of source codes against mandatory disclosures, but also negotiations on market access for both goods and services, and also telecommunication uh, services in terms of, of rules. And we're trying to update an existing WTO reference paper uh, in, um, in those negotiations. Now, not all these issues carry equal, an equal weight when it comes to their importance, of course. And it's clear that things like data flows, uh, source code, customs duties on electronic transmission and market access stand out from the issue, from the perspective of their economic importance. Um, but they also stand out for many of those in terms of the sensitivity uh, that they may have at a uh, political level. If you think of, you know, the uh, need for the EU certainly to ensure that uh, privacy, the right to uh, personal data protection uh, be fully retained, uh, let alone the more general right to regulate uh, on all uh, issues uh, that should also uh, be retained. So, so it goes without saying that these negotiations are important economically, but that they also uh, can be quite sensitive, and which is why uh, in the Commission, DG Trade is conducting these negotiations in very close cooperation with other uh, line DGs, uh, so to speak. Now, um, as I said, for us, uh, a very important objective is to secure, um, is to achieve a secured online environment for both consumers and uh, companies that uh, are trading uh, digitally and uh, preserve uh, policy space wherever we, we, need to, we need to have that. We need to have there, sorry. Now, after two and a half years of negotiations, we have on the table a so-called consolidated text, which is more a bit of a consolidation of existing text proposals. It is still about 90 pages long. It has plenty of alternatives, brackets, etc. It is uh, officially a, a negotiating document, uh, therefore confidential, but has been leaked and, and can be found on the internet, therefore. One element uh, that is clearly hindering progress is that after several formal rounds that could be held in a normal uh, negotiating environment, since um, March of, uh, of last year, we've, of course, had to move into an online negotiating format. So we're having a lot of negotiations in small groups because, of course, when you're using video uh, technology, negotiating with 86 countries in one room is, is a little bit difficult. But we regularly have plenary sessions. Uh, and we will, for example, have one, another plenary session next week on, on the 20th of May, uh, devoted in particular to initiating negotiations also on, on data flows. Uh, now, uh, despite the constructive participation by most uh, countries, uh, progress is obviously slower in this type of format. But it's also true uh, that it's um, interesting, so to speak, uh, to be uh, negotiating in, in a virtual meeting room both with the United States, China, Russia, uh, the EU, of course, and a number, a number of countries that do not necessarily share the same views on all of those very technical, but sometimes politically sensitive issues. So it's, it's also clear that we're, you know, we're gradually entering into a, a, a moment 
uh, where there is a need to, to start addressing more difficult issues, but we're also starting to hit the wall in terms of more technical, uh, our technical capacity to advance uh, on on, uh, on, um, on certain provisions. We have for the time being consolidated texts, uh, and I mean by that we have completed the negotiations on two uh, sets of, uh, of, uh, of technical uh, provisions, electronic signature and protection against spam. Uh, these are clearly very important issues, but perhaps not the most important ones from an economic perspective. What is key for the credibility of this negotiating process is that we make uh, significant, we take significant step by the next WTO ministerial conference, which will take place between the end of November and, and the beginning of December this year in, uh, in Geneva, if all goes well. So the objective will be by then to come to a situation where we have a more streamlined text uh, compared to what we have now, and probably another joint statement by ministers who would encourage negotiators to turn their attention to more difficult issues and potentially try and conclude the negotiations by a given uh, date, uh, which would then, of course, by definition, be after uh, the ministerial meeting of this year, because it's clear that it won't be unfortunately possible to conclude already uh, this year. Uh, but a solid progress report a good political message by ministers would be a very good uh, outcome uh, for our work in view in particular of the difficult conditions we operate in. Now I'll stop here, but I will obviously be very happy to try and respond to any questions that you may have later on. Thank you.